there's a lot we still need to work on. There's a lot. We, I mean, we celebrate threes like we've done something and then we give up Ian Clark trends three as a return surf. Um, but we're a lot of energy here right now. It's, it just needs to be contra- contained and controlled a little bit. You know, Rob, I barked out a little bit for over dribbling, but Taryn in, Taryn does the exact same thing. So, you know, look, there's a lot of things we can work on, um, but it's kind of cool to get our first road win. Uh, you guys never strung three wins in a row together last season. You've got three in a row now. What do you, what do you think is driving the momentum? Um, well, it's a good thing it's a new season, so that always works. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's just, um, you know, you, we changed a lot of things, even in the sense how we did preseason. I don't know if that's the answer. Um, we obviously changed what we did in the recruiting process, and I don't know if that's the answer. We made so many little adjustments and things that went against what I've done previously. Um, again, even again, like with Carlson sitting next to me, I've always had such a focus on a young group. This is the first time I actually really went for a veteran guy, free agency, and, and that's working for us. So, but I don't know what it is, but um, again, we're not trying to get too far in front, not too far behind. I've said this again and again. Uh, what's really important is the boys are doing their recovery. We've got some little things we need to work on their body. Uh, and we've got a flight, um, and then we're back at it tomorrow for a tough Perth game on Thursday. Taryn was great again, Rob was great again. What, what conversations have you had with Pedro as far as shifting his role to be more of a like, high-level connector as opposed to being like third guy? Yeah, uh, he's, his body work is that, you know, and, you know, he still has the capabilities of, you know, dropping 20 points. Um, now that we've got everybody back, um, we want to put him in the areas that he's super effective at. In saying that, we missed him a lot, right? So I look at his box score today and, yeah, it was 4 or 9 or 2, but I reckon there was three times, and I can think off the top of my head, that we sort of snubbed him. And so as I'm telling him to, hey, do this really well, it's really important that I keep on the other guys about finding him in those areas. Um, the ball finds energy. He did that, I felt, in the fourth quarter against um, Adelaide, where he was getting all the weak side cuts. Today he did it on the rebounding. Um, you know, that's kind of cool, knowing that we haven't hit his cap yet in the sense of his potential and that's on us really to get him in those spots um, and again to do it without Tanner who's gutted because this is the first time he's missed anything in five years of his career um, is, is a gutsy type road win knowing that again there's still a lot of areas we need to work on What are you liking most about what Aaron's doing out there? Um, I think he's tough he's like you know he's got you know blood nose and come back out he's ready to go there's such a, he's a unique 22 year old, you know, he's really just cut from a different cloth. Um, it's the first time in my head coaching career I've had an Australian point guard where we sort of put the imports on the wing, yet I had a great apprenticeship with that at Perth with Damien Martin. There's a lot of similarities, two different players, it's really important, it's two different players, but you know, Damo could impact winning and losing, averaging five points a game. You know, Taron can impact winning and losing, averaging 16 or 17, whatever he's at the moment. But again, like this is his second year in being a professional. Um, it's kind of cool to see what that's going to blossom into. Carl, oh, first year with this group, and Ford spoke about a bit about your veteran role and helping it. But from the outside looking in, it really seems like everyone's embracing their roles, which for a group that's just come together is pretty uh, impressive at this early stage of the season. How are you finding that uh, in terms of where everyone's at with, with really finding their place? Uh, I think it's been really natural, so it makes your job as a leader easy in a way. I think um, everyone's bought in, uh, you know, to what they need to do, and I think that stems down from what Forty's delivering as well. Um, so yeah, I don't think, you know, if not forcing it in any way like that, I'll chime in where I need to and where I feel like I can help the group. Some of those moments where we need to settle down a little bit, take a breath, and, and get back to what we're doing. Um, but for the most part, man, like these young guys are, are serious, as uh, as Forty just said, like. Shout out AK today, you know, like he, he comes in and for me personally out there, I heard him. Every ball screen, he's allowed, he's rotating, using his length. Um, he's come up with eight boards and what did he mm. finish with? 14 as well. Uh-huh. And probably changed three or four of those Lee sort of pick and rolls. And um, yeah, guys like that, just impressive. And as I said, you know, n- not forcing it, just letting guys sort of um, grow into their own in their own right. You've played alongside and behind some great point guards over the course of your NBL career in this league. 
What do you like about what you've seen from Taranga through these first two games? Uh, for me, just the head on his shoulders. You know, he's, he's picking my brain and then going out and having 26 and 5 and making two dunks, which I've never been able to do. So for me, um, it's his humbleness, it's his ability to work. He comes in early and works, um, helps everyone. Um, and for me, that's where it, where it starts. Um, I think we all know the talent there is, is awesome. Um, but for me, the head, head on his shoulders is what's impressed me most. When you say picking your brain, what sort of things are you guys talking about? Uh, probably just his, like, in the pick and roll, his usage stuff. Like I saw tonight a few times, getting in the paint, really holding off the guards and finishing. We've, we've done some of that stuff together because he's a bigger guard. Um, as I said, something that I wasn't gifted with, but I had to find ways to use my body to finish and be um, creative in the paint. Um, and I think we're seeing that from Taron. He's, he's going to another level. Forty um, Sam Waterberg's defense, I know, doesn't get lauded probably enough, uh, you know, as much as it should. But his ability to wall up and contest, um, play with verticality, I think, was great today, and, and that's really improved. I mean, how do you find that part of his game? Yeah, he's always. I mean, he's he's got such a good basketball background. You know, he, he, you know, his his term in college. You know, went to a big time program in Miami, and. Um, He's just naturally a smart dude. And I've always referred to him having a point guard brain and a, and a big body. So, um, yeah, you know, it was interesting. Like, I know people refer to his up and down year last year purely on the shooting component. But he still impacted the defence. And this is where, you know, I might have been questioned, why do I keep him out there? He's gone two or seven because he's changing it down the other end for us. So um, it's cool to see him now. You know, the, the offence is clicking for him. Um, yeah, no, it, it's 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 just it's just Wardenberg, right? It's good. Forty in the absence of Tanner Cruz, uh, current Galloway and AK really stepped up. Who? How'd you like this game and also so far this season as good? Again, you know, we you know one of the things that said we lack depth. So I like to see what area people are saying we lack depth in. I'm conscious that I don't listen to it a lot because some of it's just sound grabs to boost media engagement. And I get that. Um, but, you know, these guys are just embracing their role. The problem I have now is, you know, we have distribution of minutes because they're clearly fours and fives. Um, you know, KG just can't miss at the moment. Not gonna, you know, like he's shooting the hell out of the ball and, and AK year two with me, I hope I'm steering him in the right direction with what his focus is and where he can get his looks and his opportunities because he's such a unique player. He doesn't need to be floating around the perimeter and the three and the mid range. Like just get on the rim, you know, we'll find you. Um, we've got to do a better job finding him, but you know, he's got a nice little floater too. So, you know, we'll let him keep shooting those as long as he's hitting them. You, you have a win over Tassie, you now win over Melbourne. Um, how much do you care about like belief? Like how much that instills belief in the team to go far down the line? Well the good thing is, especially chatting with this group was, you know, because I get asked, like, do we use all that stuff as motivation? And no, it's more in a sense that the people that were critical of you then are the people now that jump on your bandwagon. But then just wait for a three-game slide because they're going to turn back on you again. And you can see that just in the last week, right? The LA point guard, what's going on with some other clubs. So if we're not paying them any mind then, you've got to stay consistent with what we're doing. And it's hard. It's not, it's not fun all the time. It's not. It's hard work, you know, and that's the point of it is winning's not easy, training's not fun, but the reward is that you're 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 getting better as a basketball player and we get some results and it blossoms in your career and you get paid more and, and all the things that come with the fruits of basketball, but if it was all sunshine and rainbows, like everyone would do it. So now that there's a little bit, let's say it's called belief, we have to stick with what we're doing. And so Monday's review is just gonna be as bad as if it was a loss because there's a lot of areas we need to work on. Um, I feel like with this group, they're okay. You know, we're young, but the maturity, because we've driven this message from the start, if we're not responding then, we can't respond now, we just gotta to stick to our guns. I gotta worry about Monday and we're preparing for Perth on Thursday. Uh, going into half time, was there talk of stopping, I guess, Goldie and Clark in particular, and because you're able to limit the impact in the second half, but they, they have okay games overall, but um, yeah, how'd you go about that? It's no, I was, I, was, I was ecstatic about Golden's 22 points at half time. Yeah, no, I was, <laughs> it was a focus. Um, we changed up a little bit, showed a hand early because we had to with our on-ball coverage. Um, 
I knew they were going to come out and run a little bit more Spain action because uh, we messed it up. Um, so we went from one particular coverage to another. Um, the boys did a great job clamping it down. The issues sort of shifted from the easy points they'll get into then us giving up a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, it's something we need to work on. Sorry, I'm just tired. It's been a long weekend. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.